hey, Mary, I just started and people are starting to join now. I assume you're going to share your share the presentation. Correct. Hey, folks, welcome to the first Netroots Nation webinar for 2022. I'm going to give people another two minutes, then go ahead and get started. I will be sharing my screen. If you have any issues with uh, the audio or seeing what we're sharing, please um, put something in chat or uh, raise your hand. And then there's also a Q&A section to this webinar. Uh, if you go ahead and uh, submit any questions as you go, we'll answer most of them at the end. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Let me share my screen, hopefully correctly. Hopefully you all see my screen. Let me know if anyone's having any issues. Uh, Brian, I can uh, give you my uh, personal address offline. All right. I haven't seen anyone say they can't see this, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to the first Netroots Nation 2022 webinar for panel training submission info. I'm um, sure by some of the names on here, I know some of you have been through this before. It's changed a little bit from previous years. So please feel free to ask questions and uh, hopefully we'll um, help you all out. Uh, I'm Eric Fett, I'm the Executive Director of Netroots Nation and I'll let Mary introduce herself. Hey, I'm Mary Rickles, and I am the Communications and Political Director. Um, I oversee most of the programming and outreach most, most years. Thank you, Mary. All right. Jumping right into it. Uh, some dates to remember for 2020. We've opened the submission period, and we plan on closing the submission period on April 14th, right before tax day. So you have a few weeks to get in your submissions. By early May, we will start notifying organizers whether their panel or training was selected or not. And as soon as you've been notified, the first thing we're gonna do is try to pin down the time of your session. As you can imagine with hundreds of sessions or 100 plus sessions and hundreds of speakers, usually upwards of 400 speakers and trainers, trying to coordinate all of that time and then make sure that sessions aren't up against each other that have um, that would be interested in similar groups uh, can be very difficult. So we'll be hitting you up with questions as organizers and we'll need to get quick responses. We'd like to get our schedule set by early June so we can announce it. We can launch our mobile app and get everyone connected. Looking forward to the convention on August 18th. 
through the 20th. So what to submit? Mary, I'll let you go ahead and take this section. So you can submit two different types of sessions. Um, you can submit a panel or a training. Um, and the main, the main difference there is that the panels are really meant to be like issue discussions or more in-depth conversations around a campaign or strategy, um, whereas the trainings are, um, are very skills focused. We want with the training for people to be able to come away saying, I learned this thing. Um, and so that's, that's really the takeaway there. Um, panels, you can have a, a moderator and up to four panelists. We ask that folks um, that you keep it um, to no more than four because we want to make sure that people who are participating have enough time to speak. And then trainers, you can have one trainer or two trainers. Um, and we ask that we just have found that two trainers is kind of the max um, they work best um, and are, are usually the most um, useful for folks when it's not you know too many presenters. Um, so. For panels, um, people submit every year on every topic imaginable. Um, we, we literally get submissions on probably every, every issue out there. Um, but some of the things that we really wanna see this year, conversations about protecting democracy here and abroad, obviously there's um, a lot of conversations around that that relate to the election um, and how we protect, protect the vote and ensure that people's voices are counted. Um, but also, you know, conversations about democracy that that winds into what's happening in Ukraine and, and other places around the globe. Um, conversations about the midterms, how do we win, what candidates are, um, are exciting folks, um, not just, you know, big name um, races. We want conversations about, um, you know, what's happening up and down the ballot. Um, so usually every year we'll have conversations around local, you know, local campaigns, um, you know, how, how um, folks are getting engaged on the ground in their communities or in their states. Um, current events, so things like COVID recovery, um, economic, um, economic, um, economic issues, um, again, both here and abroad, that's, um, you know, stuff that's all related to COVID as well. Um, things like voter protection, the war in Russia, uh, climate change, um, anything like that. Um, but again, you know, if you're working on drug policy like that, we always get sessions on that too. So don't feel like, you know, if it's not something that's super in the news cycle that you can't submit. Um, one thing we do want to encourage is um, conversations about big picture ideas. Um, you know, I think seven or eight years ago, we had a panel on um, universal basic income. And at the time that wasn't really on any, like people weren't really talking about that in the mainstream. Um, and now it's something that, you know, is often brought up during election, uh, during campaign cycles in particular. Um, and so, you know, we want to be having big conversations um, about, about big ideas. Um, even if it doesn't seem like something it, that's politically possible right now, it's good to have those conversations earlier than later. Um, and then we always want to focus on what's happening in our host city and state. So if you are from Pennsylvania, um, you know, we want to know what's happening there. Um, we always ask, you know, that local panels, like, um, we always want them to also be relevant. So, you know, people often will come away and say, oh, wow, this panel, you know, of um, panel that was all, you know, folks in, in Pennsylvania was really relevant. I see some, you know, similarities in what's happening in my state. Um, so that's just some high level things that you can submit. Um, for trainings, again, you can submit on anything, but we, in particular, we have sessions on online organizing, um, both basic, advanced, and um, intermediate. Um, we want to have sessions on grassroots, um, grassroots organizing, some more door knocking and how to run, you know, manage volunteers and things like that, because there are a lot of folks who come to our conference who aren't necessarily digital organizers. Communications focused sessions. So if you are working in messaging or um, PR or something like that, then those sessions are always um, popular as well. Um, plus, we also want to have some stuff on sort of more movement focus. So how do we create healthy cultures in our organizations? How do we 
um, ensure that we are, you know, hiring and using inclusive hiring practices, um, things like that as well. Um, we do want our trainings to appeal to the folks who are brand new. Um, we have folks who come to Netroots who are just getting into politics. Maybe they just volunteer for their local um, party or something like that. And we have folks who've been in the progressive movement for, for decades and who are doing really cutting edge things. And we want to appeal to all of those people. Um, we, you know, our trainings aren't just for people who work at nonprofits or work at unions. We also, like I said, want to have sessions that are for people who, um, who just volunteer for their local indivisible group or, um, or plug in when Sierra, their local Sierra club does something or whatever. Um, you know, we've had sessions on lots of different topics. Um, here are some just quick um, sample training topics we've had in the past. Um, so again, don't feel like you have to do something in this, um, in this space. Um, we also usually every year get stuff on graphic design and like those are really popular too. So try to think about, you know, what are some, what are some topics that maybe, you know, if you're an expert in one particular area or you're really um, knowledgeable about, um, about one particular organizing tactic or strategy or tool, um, what are the questions that folks, you know, might come to you with? Um, so think about that when you're trying to brainstorm a training idea, if that's, um, if that's what you're looking to do. Um, Michael, yeah, sure. Uh, reparation, Michael's asking about in the Q&A about reparations. Um, that we have had conversations in the last few years on reparations and we definitely would welcome that. Um, you know, those, those conversations are always, um, I think really engaging for folks. Um, so yeah, so that's just a quick overview. Um, you also, if you have some idea that may be a little bit out of the box, um, occasionally we'll get folks who, Hey, I want to do this kind of different, um, different type session. Like a few years ago, we had somebody who wanted to do, um, like a like a roundtable conversation on student debt, um, and it was not necessarily a panel presentation, and it wasn't really a full training either. It was kind of more of a hybrid model. Just come to us with that idea. Um, you can email us at panels at netreachnation.org, and we're always happy to chat through ideas that might not fit into those boxes. Eric, you're on mute. <laughs> um, a little bit on Michael, like on your, your idea about uh, reparations. I think that actually would be a fantastic panel. Something to keep in mind is your audience at Netroots Nation. For something like that, most people would tend to say, yes, it's a good idea. Maybe not everyone. So I would want to see a panel that not only made the case for it, but probably more importantly, how could we actually make it happen, right? How do we take the kit? How do we take this idea and put it into action? Uh, so keep in mind your audience as you're submitting trainings and panels. So how to submit? Um, I'll take this section, Mayor. Uh, but feel free to jump in, please. Uh, as we mentioned, the selection timeline is open. We've got a couple of webinars. If you go to our website and you click on propose a session at the top menu, it'll take you to this page. On this page, you'll be able to see more detailed information about proposing a panel and training, a lot of our frequently asked questions, many of which we're going over today. Uh, and once you're ready, you can go ahead and click to submit your panel or your training idea. Uh, I also will be sending this uh, slide deck to folks and we'll make available a recording um, as well. The first page you'll hit after you click to submit a panel or a training gives you a couple of acknowledgements of your commitment as an organizer. So as an organizer, we're gonna be asking a few things of you. Again, we get 400 submissions plus, we are going to select probably over 100 trainings and uh, panels, and we'll have about 400 speakers and trainers. We could not do this without the work of the organizers who put together these panels, coordinate all those folks' schedules, et cetera. There are four of us on staff, literally. Uh, and we need the work of the community to be able to put on such a high level show. Uh, 
I'm just going to take you through the information we are looking for so you can, and you will, again, I will be sending out this deck to folks. So you'll have an idea of what kind of information we'd like you to collect um, before you go and uh, hit the pages and then get stuck on something. Um, so first thing would be uh, your or the uh, organizer's name, email, phone number, um, what organization, if any, they're affiliated with, uh, Twitter handle is optional, and what role the organizer will ha have. Some people are just the organizers of the panels. Some will be the moderator or the panelist as well. Um, and then after that, you'll get to the next page. And there'll be some long form answers. Uh, for these longer answers, please note the maximum length that's allowed. And if you can, please submit it in one paragraph. Putting paragraph breaks in there and especially special characters or formatting like a bulleted list really messes up as we try to evaluate these and get the information out to our committees who are evaluating these panels. So just make it a simple one paragraph text. First thing we'll be asking for is what the name of the panel is. Please be clear about in the title. It's, it's great to get creative and it's great to be exciting, but um, people need to be able to know what the panel is out about by looking at the title. So don't get too cute uh, in, in the titles or too obscure. And that's especially make, make sure. relevant for trainings. Um, one thing that we notice in our feedback after the conference every year is that there's all, there are always a few sessions where someone's like, I went to this training and it was really interesting, but it was not on what I thought it was going to be about. Um, and so um, for, for training, something that's, you know, three tips to learn, you know, three tips to help you blah, or, you know, level up your skills on X or Y. Um, so something like that, that makes it very clear um, about what they're going to learn at a training in particular. So um, the proposed description of the panel training, this will be the description, although there will be a chance to edit it and we will often edit it with you uh, in the future. But this is the one that's actually going to show up in the agenda. So this description is what you want folks who are considering attending your training or your panel to know the reason they should go. It's the, uh, yeah, all of that, all the good stuff. Uh, you don't need to list the trainers or the panelists who will be part of it because they will be listed separately in the agenda and both for our committees who are selecting these. Uh, why Netroots Nation should choose your uh, panel. So the next few are not public. Uh, meaning that they don't show up in the agenda, but we do send them to our committees who are ranking the submissions for us. Um, so this is your chance to convince the committee why this panel should be chosen out of the 400 plus panels or trainings that are submitted. Uh, for panels only, we'll ask you what the key takeaways are for people who are attending the panels. Why is this panel important to the overall progressive movement? And for trainings only, uh, we want to focus on what the key takeaways or skills that people will be taught by attending these panels. Uh, please be specific about what kind of things they will be learning, not just better emailing skills. Uh, specifically, what is it about this emailing training that you're submitting uh, people will learn? And then let us know what the skill level and intended audience is. We want to make sure we have a range of intermediate, advanced, and beginner trainings. So that will help us do it. For the trainings as well, we'll ask you what categories uh, you think the session will fit into. And if it's more than just, you'll choose two, but if it's more than two, don't worry about it. We see that all the time and we'll be able to manage with that. And this one note on the skill level, um, this is particularly relevant for our online organizing sessions. Um, if you are, for example, wanting to do a session on um, that relates to like website coding and like next, you know, uh, cutting edge website, um, website things, um, please note in there, you know, this training is, it doesn't have to necessarily say this training is for beginners or this training is for advanced um, organizers, something like this training 
um, is for people who have a you know basic knowledge of HTML um, or have a basic knowledge of using WordPress or Squarespace or whatever. So just something like that that helps folks know like um, that will help us. Um, it'll help your your session actually score better if it is chosen. Like it'll help people. Um, you know, have better feedback because they'll know exactly like, oh, I want to go to the session, but I'm not, you know, I don't have these, these qualifications just yet or, or whatever. So that's just helps something to know. And to uh, a little bit more on uh, Beatrice's question uh, where she asked about what if I don't have all the information about my panelists um, before, while, when I submit, um, as Mary noted in her answer, you can update it by sending as an email but also note that if it is chosen, we will come back to you and get all of the information. Uh, being as complete as possible at the very least about who these people are and why uh, our NetRoots community would wanna hear from them, which you'll see in a minute in the next questions is, is really the most important part. Uh, so for the panel moderator, and for each of the panelists, which again, as Mary mentioned, we allow up to four panelists per session. Um, and for each of the trainers, up to two, we need the following information. So we're looking for their name, first and last, email, uh, Twitter handle, it's actually optional, so uh, required, background. And um, this is kind of where the important part, because this is for the committee. This isn't gonna go be on the public side of it, the, if when people are selected as a speaker, they'll have a chance to create and update their own profile. That will be the public facing profile. But we gotta give the committee important information about why these people um, would be a good voice for us to amplify at Netroots Nation. So what is their background? What is their experience? What kind of commitment have you secured? It, Please just be honest. We have definitely taken panels where people don't have commitment from certain panelists yet. That's fine. We understand it's a tight time frame, and you may not hear back from everyone yet. But we do want to know uh, who it is and what kind of commitment or communication you have had from the folks. And that, you are that's really important. If you put someone who's an elected official or candidate. Um, you know, last year we got a submission that had, I think, Michelle Obama on it. Um, and like the person hadn't, you know, had no connection to them. And, um, you know, or, or even like so, every year some folks put a senator or whatever. And like, if you have a connection to that office, maybe you work in that office or whatever, that's totally fine. But it's just, it's really helpful for us to know like, oh, this panel has someone who's kind of high profile or who's running for office or whatever. It helps us to know like, whether or not that's gonna be a lift that we'll have to make or um, whether that's a connection that you, you own. And uh, trust us, we tried to get Michelle Obama <laughs> as well for our convention. And I'm sure we will try again. Uh, demographics. So again, these, will not, these responses will not be made public. And other than the committee and the staff, people will not see these responses, but we try really hard to make sure that we're uplifting diverse representative voices. Last year, uh, the, the, there were more black women as speakers than there were in any other group. And that was very important to us. So do the best of your ability for these folks. Let us know what gender, um, ethnicity, whether they identify as LGBTQ, or whether they identify with a disability or chronic health condition. We wanna make sure that uh, we are getting representation from across the movement. All right, once you've gotten all that in there, you go ahead and hit submit. As Mary mentioned, if after the fact you say, oh, I need to change a speaker or something, you can go ahead and email us at panels at netrootsnation.org. Uh, and then there'll also be the opportunity to make some corrections and we may come back to you with some changes if your panel or training is selected. So people always wanna know about how uh, we um, select our submissions. Whoops, wrong way. 
All right. Will yours get chosen? Again, we usually have 400 plus submissions. Need to narrow that down to about 100 trainings and panels that we can take. Uh, it's still a heck of a lot of content, but there are multiple factors that go into that. Uh, sometimes and always, not even sometimes, I guarantee always, Mary's had this experience as well. Every year I tell myself I'm going to be really harsh and I'm only going to take the top of the top of the top panels and the first pass through, I think I've done it and I count them all up and there's 200 panels that are the top of the top and we still have to get rid of 100. So great panels end up not making the cut for many reasons, lots of times. Um, each Mary takes the time to take all of the submissions and break them out into categories. We send groups of panels to issue committees who then vote on, on the, um, which ones they would like to see. And then we need to bring all of those together to a final committee and then choose our slate of panels. So on, on the issue committees, um, a lot of time people often ask like who, who, who scores them? Um, and that's, it's some of our staff and board, but it's also people like you. Um, we open it up for um, the community to, um, to sign up for a scoring committee. I'm gonna drop a link in, um, in the chat right now. Um, if you're interested in and for example, scoring, ses uh, scoring sessions that relate to foreign policy, then just um, go to that link um, and then you can sign up to be on a panel committee. If you're on a panel committee and you're submitting a panel, that's okay. We just ask that when you're scoring them, you make a note that, you know, this is my panel. Um, and so that we know, um, you know, we kind of know what's happening there. But, um, you know, we'd love to have, um, you know, any of you guys that are interested in um, helping score um, to be on that. Just know that it's a commitment of about eight hours or so asked for, four to eight hours asked for in a particular week once we get those out to the committees. So what we are looking for, uh, diversity in our speakers and trainers, not only ethnic diversity, uh, but also diversity from different organizations, different communities. We want to make sure we have a variety of viewpoints, both for who's going to be presenting and for the topics. Um, we like topics that cross silos and timely conversations are always important and always end up getting rated very high. Uh, to you want to avoid monolithic panelists, uh, panelists all from one organization, unless it's a very specific uh, this is for panels, trainings, uh, often both trainers can be from the same organization, but for panelists, uh, if we see a panel that has panelists all from one organization, we're going to look at that a little more critically than a panel that's, that's having people from multiple organizations or multiple fields. Um, a panel that's really just a sales pitch for your organization or your product. Um, uh, won't, won't score well. And as Mary mentioned, fantasy speakers. If you have folks who are elected or famous, it helps to have a connection to them um, because we don't necessarily have the connection to some of these folks. Um, sometimes we do. So, you know, it, it is okay to have one of those or, um, but not a entire slate of panelists. And make sure that your ideas are, are flushed out. As I mentioned, we get over 400 submissions. So um, a submission that I would love to talk to people about ending racism. Uh, and that's kind of the end of it. So it's like, well, we all want to do it, but we got to have a little more details than that. Uh, diversity, how important is diversity among your panelists? It is extremely important. Uh, I, be honest, if we get a submission that's all white dudes, it is not going to get scored well and most likely will not pass. We may, sometimes we get panels that we think are fantastic, but we think that they're missing an important voice and we may come back to you and say, we really like what you submitted 
but can you add someone from this community, this sector? Can we help find that person for you? Uh, if you can submit early in the window, we do read these as they come in to some extent. And Mary will reach out to folks and say, hey, I saw you submitted a panel on XYZ. It looks really good, but it could, would be better if it had this piece of information or it's missing this. Uh, we honestly get most of our submissions in the last couple of days. So we don't have the opportunity to go back to those folks. So if you can submit early, Again, a simple, straightforward title is important to the panel. Um, you know, people, if it's an inside joke, uh, a clever pun, then the committees may have no idea what it is you're talking to. And then be clear, concise, and complete in your descriptions. Just think about your audience. You're trying to convince a stranger why they should go, why they should vote on this panel, and then you're trying to convince an attendee why they should attend. And this is something we see every year. We and Eric mentioned it a second ago about um, monolithic panels um, from one organization. Um, we put that in our in our um, you know explanations and FAQ pages every year, and I we still will get sessions that have five people from the same organization on them. Um, the reason that we, um, you know, we, we don't want to ever, we've gotten feedback in some cases where someone went to a session and like, oh, I felt like it was a pitch um, for me to buy someone's product or, or, or something like that. And so we want to avoid that, but mostly we, we want to make sure that, you know, if you're, if you work for um, NARAL, for example, and you submit a session that only has people from your organization, um, that doesn't always give a good picture of, of what, um, what your success story was or what your issue, you know, what the organizing story was. And so we always suggest, you know, if you're, if you're working on a panel um, and you're from an, an immigration organization, well, you probably collaborated with, you know, if you're a local organization, maybe you collaborated with a national partner or maybe um, someone in, you know, in the labor sector in your community um, was a good ally. Or maybe um, maybe the moderator is um, you know a progressive journalist who covers your issue. Um, so try to think about like you know if you're wanting to tell the story of how your organi organization um, won something, um, then think about who your allies were and who did you work with and and all those you know sorts of things. Um, so that that's that's kind of why we do that. All right. Uh, and go ahead, please submit your questions in the uh, Q&A section uh, of the webinar, and we will get to your questions. But a few of the frequently asked ones, how long are the sessions? This year, they are 60 minutes long. Um, and really, you end up having about 50 minutes worth of material by the time people kind of get settled in, you get started. We found that for trainings, sometimes it's a little rush. For panels, it's a really good length of time. Uh, but anyway, so and what when will your sessions take place? It'll be one of nine breakout slots. If you, Mary, if you can drop the overview schedule link mm -hmm. into chat if you get a chance. This may change, but you'll get an idea of when the panels are going to be. We are trying something a little different this year for people who have been at Netroots before. On Thursday and Friday, the first session of the morning are going to be professional development sessions. These will be 90-minute trainings focused for folks who are work at organizations or running for office or kind of do this professionally, although activists will be, of course, welcome to join. We will be curating those sessions. My guess is we'll probably take half of them from the submissions from people who submit, and then the rest will uh, curate and come to folks and ask them to help. So if you submit a training, that's really good. We may come back and ask if you're willing to do it as a professional development session. But most of the sessions will happen starting in the afternoon over the three days. Uh, um, Kip, Kip has a question, what are 
the tech capabilities for panels. Um, Eric, do you want to go over what is in every panel room and training sure. room? Yeah, it's uh, every training room and well, and panel room. The training rooms are set up with a projector, a screen, and uh, two mobile or wireless microphones for the uh, trainers. Uh, everyone should bring their own computer. And if you have an older Mac, definitely bring your own dongle <laughs> to connect it to the projector. And, uh, and it's projected sound. The rooms hold for the trainings. The rooms hold about 100 to 150 people. Hopefully that answers your question. And if you have specific tech questions, please feel free to reach out. Uh, the, pan the panel rooms also have um, projectors and screens. Yes, the panel rooms have projectors and screens and there's uh, wired microphones for five people plus a podium mic. The um, also, and, but if you do have a training, let me just take a second to say, we have had in the past like a group that was doing a training, and I know we will again this year, uh, on that they needed a camera so people could be on film and see themselves being filmed. That is something that if either you we can work with you, either you can bring your own and we can work with you to make sure your training is set at a time that there's time to set it up, or we can figure out we have a lot of that equipment as well. So if you do have a specialized piece of equipment that you need, just reach out and we'll work with you on that. And yeah, the, they are wireless mics for the trainers. Uh, once your panel is selected, actually that's when the work really does begin. Um, Cause we're gonna need to come back to you, get firm commitments from your trainers, from your speakers, and we need to get that, that time nailed down. Uh, we, one of the new acknowledgements you will see this year is that you give us our phone, your phone number and you acknowledge that we may be texting you if we don't hear back from you quickly uh, with a response to our emails. We are on a shortened timeline this year and we need to hear back from people quickly. And, and generally what, like once we have our selection of which um, sessions will be presented in Pittsburgh, the first thing that we do is notify you that your session was um, submitted. And in that notification, we usually say, here is the um, title and description that we plan to post. Usually we'll edit those um, for grammar before we um, submit those back to you. Um, so if for some reason, like if you're doing a foreign policy panel and you know the situation has wildly changed since um since you submitted it you'll have a chance to um to kind of update that title or description to reflect um you know what's current if you need to um and then once uh usually we, we give you a day or two to reply to that we'll post all the session um names and titles so that people can start seeing what content will be um, available and then after that is done then we start coming back around to, to all the organizers and saying, hey, are your, you know, out of the four people that you submitted as speakers, which ones are confirmed? Um, and we'll start getting those folks into the system. Usually what happens is we'll have a handful of sessions that, you know, they'll immediately say, we're all, we're all um, confirmed, everyone can attend. Um, and then uh, we'll have some that say, oh, I haven't confirmed anyone, I have to do that. And then we'll have some that um, we'll say, oh, these three people are confirmed, but I need to circle back with this one, one person. So we usually post speakers as they're confirmed on our website, um, kind of in waves, um, because we want people who are attending to be able to, to see who the great speakers are. So um, so we will you know, be coming back around to you um, on that. And then you know, as we get closer to the event, we'll circle back on logistics, registration, and some other things like that. Speaking of registration, is there a cost for speakers to register? Yes, um, we do ask speakers to register. Uh, if their organization is paying for them uh, or they can afford it, we ask people to register at the full rate. Uh, we, the cost uh, for registration is less than half of what it costs us to put on this event. We make that up with 
other donations, with our sponsorships and with other stuff, we try to keep our rates as low as possible. So we do ask people to register uh, and pay a full registration if they can. But there are reduced rates and waivers available for speakers. We never want the cost of registration. We know that's only one cost to attend Netroots, but we never want the cost of registration to keep us from hearing an important voice, uh, especially someone that may not get a chance to be heard otherwise because they don't have the audience or the means. So we will work with you on any speakers that cannot afford the registration. Do more submissions equal better odds of getting selected? Not, and that, here it says not necessarily, and I'm even going to change that to no. Uh, not really. So with the uh, hundreds submissions that we end up selecting, one of the things we look at is who those submissions are from. And if one organization has five submissions that maybe even made it through the first round because they were all five really strong, we will pr probably end up cutting three or four of those five in the final cut. We want to, again, make sure we have diverse range of folks who are getting an opportunity to speak and be heard from at net roots. So if you it's submit very, five- It's very rare that we take more than one session from one organization yes. or person. So, you know, we want to make sure that we're giving as many people a chance to present as possible, so. Yeah, and what- has happened in the past is an organization has submitted three or four panels and it turns out really there was only one of them that that was, that was their favorite. And we went through and maybe we even agree that that one that was their favorite, we also thought was the best one, but we happened to get two other strong submissions for that same topic. And one of their other ones from that organization was also really strong. So we end up taking the one that wasn't their favorite because we have that flexibility too. So I recommend not submitting more than two or three trainings and panels. Um, if you have an out idea that's outside the box, go ahead and send us an email. Uh, if it doesn't fit, in that panel or training box, we want to know about it. And then caucuses. In the past, we have had issue and geographic caucuses. We are, our goal is to have those again now that we're back in person. So um, if you would like to lead the a caucus for your state or on a particular issue, which is really an opportunity for folks to sit and brainstorm and talk about whatever the location or the issue is, just send us an email and let us know and we will put you on the list when we get around to announcing those caucuses. All right, so if you have any questions that we haven't uh, covered, please drop them in the Q&A or you know, feel free to send us an email to panels at netrootsnation.org. Um, a few of us have access to that email box, so we keep an eye on it, and uh, we're happy to get back to you. We really want to try to make sure we have a variety of topics, and we love hearing from new people who have never submitted before. You know, we, we, we love our old folks, uh, a few of you who I, I, I see are here today, and I don't mean old as an age, although we're all feeling that way these days. But folks who submit every year, who put on great panels and great trainings, we'd love to see them come through every year and our attendees look forward to them. But we also like to get a new mix of new voices in there. So please do consider submitting, telling your friends and coworkers and associates and other organizations you know who should be involved about this and get them to submit as well. And especially if, if, if you've never submitted before or this is your first time attending and you're a little nervous to submit, you are welcome to send, like if you wanna type up your panel description and title and like who, who your proposed panelists are and shoot that over to us and on, at panel, the panel's email, we're happy to look at that and give you feedback. Sometimes it's, it's easy for us to 
um, you know, kind of glance through it and see like where a hole might be like, oh, oh, this looks great, but maybe you could consider adding someone from labor or adding someone, you know, who's a local organizer um, or, hey, I, you know, I really like the panelists lineup, but, you know, the, the description is a little confusing to me about what the conversation is going to be about um, or whatever. So we're happy to give you um, quick feedback if you'd like to do that. Um, you know, feel free to use that email as, um, as your direct, uh, you know, line to us. We want to make sure that folks feel confident when they're submitting, so. Any Anybody questions? have any other questions? You can you can drop them either in the chat or in the Q and A. Um, we have a little bit more time if anybody has any other questions. All right. Well, as I mentioned, uh, I will be sending out this panel deck. Um, this panel deck, this slide deck to everyone, and we'll be either making this or the next webinar available on YouTube for people who really want to see our pretty faces over and over again. Um, but that's about it. Um, yes, Kim, yes, for really, really yes, for trainings or panels. Um, that's just the email is just panels at netroots.org. So, um, so yeah. Uh, yes, and the slide deck will be sent to the email that you registered for this webinar. If you need it sent to another one, uh, drop us an email at um, the panels at netroosnation.org. And yeah, we do use we do tend to use panels um, for both our trainings and our panels. All right. Well, thanks to everyone, and hopefully. Whether or not you end up getting a training or a panel at Netroots, I hope we're going to see you in August in Pittsburgh. Even if you were hoping to be able to get there and speak officially at panel and maybe your panel didn't get chosen, for those people who have gone, they know that a lot of the best conversations also happen in the hallways at Netroots Nation or at the parties, at the happy hours, um, you know, or even... Uh, in the caucus rooms or in the exhibit hall. So it's an exciting time. We're thrilled to be back in person and we look forward to seeing y'all in August. Thanks everyone. <laughs>